Hey everybody, this is Jason with Thanks for Trying Esports here on Thanks for Trying TV. Today I was thinking about doing a tutorial for GIMP, the image manipulation program that I use to create my NASCAR iRacing series paint schemes. This is more aimed towards people that haven't used GIMP and want to start to create their own paint schemes and logos and whatnot to put into iRacing. This is not gauged to people who want to do really, really extravagant paint schemes. This is going to be a basic overview of a few of the features of GIMP, how to get logos on a car, and how to get that car into iRacing. So today, to, to just get started, we're going to need two different programs. One program is GIMP itself, which is the software that we use to create these paint schemes. The next program we're going to need is Trading Paints. That's how we get the paint onto the car in iRacing and see other people's iRacing paint schemes. So first things first, we're going to go and we're going to actually download GIMP. Obviously, I already have GIMP pulled up here. I have it already. But if you don't have it, we go to this website right here, portableapps.com. Now, a quick Google search of GIMP Portable will bring you, and this website will come up. You just go to this website. Download GIMP here. It's free. It'll download, and then you'll have something just like this, like I have on my computer. The program has a lot of tools. It's like an Adobe Photoshop. Uh, it has a little less tools than Adobe Photoshop, but basically you can do a lot of the same things. Uh, it just has a few less features, a few less effects and stuff that you can do. But for making an iRacing scheme, this is more than enough than what you need. The second program we're going to talk about is Trading Paints. So, I'll search it like uh, I was going to search if I didn't have it. It's already right here. So, you search Trading Paints, this website will come up, tradingpaints.com. It'll be the showroom. When I click it, it pulls it up to my home screen, which is my paints. If you don't have the software installed, you'll have to link it with your iRacing account, which uh, I think is by customer ID. I haven't done it in a long time, but I think that's what it's from. Uh, it'll link it, and then you'll be able to add and remove paint schemes as needed. Uh, the website has a lot of different ways. You can even do uh, other paint schemes. You can use paint schemes people have uploaded to Trading Paints. Of uh, Like, we'll just go to the sh you know, trending showroom right now. Like, you could grab any of these paint schemes and uh, put them on your car. But today, we're going to talk about making our own. Now, you can go use these. It'll be fine. It, it, you know, you can pick any any paint scheme you want out of here. I mean, there's so many. But if you want to put your own logo, you want to create your own, this is what this tutorial is meant for. This tutorial is meant for people who want to just start getting into creating their own paint schemes. It's Like I said, it's not going to be a real in-depth one to make extremely detailed paint schemes. This is going to be an overview to get you started in the world of GIMP and help you get started with making paint schemes. So now that we have GIMP downloaded, now that we have Trading Paints downloaded, what else do we need? Well, we need the canvas to start painting. Now that canvas is going to be what we call a template. You get them from iRacing. So log into iRacing like you normally would, whether it be you click the UI shortcut on your desktop, sign in on the, uh, on the web browser, and this comes up. At the end of the day, it's all going to be the same. What you want to do this is the screen it obviously brings you up to when you get into iRacing. You want to go down to My Content. Now, today, just just for educational purposes, we're going to use a car I'm really familiar with um, that I paint, that I use, the NASCAR Cup Series Chevy Camaro. Now, to download the template, you find it here. Here is your, your car. Click it. Now, iRacing has a built-in uh, paint scheme creator. This is obviously my paint scheme that I run uh, that I'm going to be running this year in the NASCAR iRacing series. Don't mind that. Uh, this is uh, we're going to be starting from scratch. So again, this this screen will come up and it will come up blank for you if you don't have Trading Paints or a paint tied to this car. Uh, you want to hit Paint Car. Here's the basic iRacing paint uh, program type thing that they have. It's very fairly basic. You can do what you want with it. I mean, it's it has enough features that you can create a custom car and make it look pretty good, and you can put sponsors on it, a very limited number amount of sponsors. But today we're going to be making our own. So we need to go down to the bottom where it says Download Template. 
click that. It's going to download your template here. Once it's done downloading, it's going to open up. Here's the template here. See how it says PSD file? That's the type of file that has all the layers in it. So what we're going to need to do, we're going to need to find a place to save it. So I'm just going to go to my E drive. I'm going to go new folder, GIMP tutorial. Double click. And we're going to drag this template into this folder. Once it's dragged over there, you can close out of both these. You don't need them. Let's head back over to GIMP. So the basic overlay of GIMP, you have your tools on your left side, all your options on the left top. This is where your, your layers come into, into play. Over here, this is where all your layers will show up. I don't quite use this. This is just kind of some effects and patterns and whatnot. I don't really use that. I like to make my own. But now we need to load up that template that we had just downloaded. So we're going to go up to File, which is in the top left. Go to Open. So here we're already in our GIMP tutorial folder. Here's that template that we've added into that folder. And here's a little bit of a preview of the template. Want to click that. Want to hit Open. Now it's going to prompt me whether I want to keep or convert. I want to keep. There's our template. That, in a nutshell, is what an iRacing car, iRacing paint scheme is, is right here. So, first thing I want to go over before I get into the tools is the layers. Now, as you can see, we have three separate things here that it loaded up with, each with a plus sign. I'm going to hit the plus on the red layer. I'm going to hit the plus on the blue layer. Now, that's going to open up all the layers that are inside both of those sections. Now the way the layers work is obviously if it's above one, it's going to be over that layer. So car decal is going to be over tape. Tape is going to be over color change decals. Windshield banners are going to be under the color change decals. That's basically how it works. Now car de decal. See how when I click, I left click the car decal. It's going to have this yellow box that comes around, and it's going to highlight all the car details, decals. Now, if I grab this and move them, see what it grabbed? It grabbed all the logos on the front. It grabbed the Cup Series logos, the logo on the windshield, all that. I'm going to hit Control-Z to bring that back where it was. I'm going to show you a, a really useful feature that GIMP has um, with the car de decals. So say you uh, have a layer this one, for example, that you want to work behind, but you don't want to see that layer. That's what this little eye is for right here. This is where you disable and enable visible layers. So if I hit this eye, watch what happens. All the logos are gone. They're still there. They're still in your, your template. They're just not visible. So you can work underneath them. We're going to turn those back on. With all of these layers, you have the ones that come with your template, which is the pit box colors, the jack stands, and all of that. I don't mess around with a lot of these. I do mess around with the color change, and I do mess around with the pit board, the rear spoiler, and the pit box colors. That's the four that I really mess around with to change. So if you click on any of these, like here's the pit board, see how it highlighted that pit board area? That's how you select these different layers to work in them. Think about it this way. This square, if I was to take the paintbrush and draw a line from here down to here, it would only show the line here because this is your work area inside this square. Now we're going to go down to the base. Now, a blank base is what we're going to use today for this bare bones tutorial. You can use car patterns that are the same ones that are in iRacing's built-in paint updater uh, paint program type thing. They're the same ones, but they'll show up. I'll just show you guys real quick. They'll show up like this in different colors, and you can color scheme the way you want. For the purpose of today's tutorial, we're not going to use those. We're just going to go with a, bank, uh, a blank canvas. This is a pretty basic overview of the layers and how they work. Just a few things to remember is your, your eye to make them visible and not visible. You can grab and drag and drop to put them over different layers. So, so you have a layer that's underneath one, but you want it on the other 
on the top of it, like say the windshield banners, right? You can grab this and put it over the color change. And now that will appear over that color change layer. Another couple of useful tools up here. If you're new to iRacing Paint, if you're new to racing in general, or just racing these cars, and you're not really familiar where the sponsors go, this is an important tool to not only show you where the sponsors go, but even just to show you like if you're putting the sponsor in the right area. So see how the eye has disappeared on a few of these? We're going to start with the sponsor blocks. If you turn the eye on, these are where the sponsors go. This is where... If you were to put them on iRacing and you know pick one of those sponsors that we had the drop down earlier, this is where they'd end up. So this is just a good check of if you have a logo that you're putting on the car and you put it in this box, you know that you're in a safe area for that logo to be shown. The next one we're going to talk about is the number blocks. So if you have something you want to be visible fully and you don't want the number to block it out, hit this I. These green blocks are where the numbers are going to show up. So say you have a logo that you want to put on the door, kind of like the NASCAR All-Star schemes where they had the number back here and you wanted the logo up here. This is where that number will be. If you put that logo there, the number will block it out unless you disable car numbers, which is something we're going to get into in another video, not this one. The next really important thing uh, in this red section is the wireframe. Now, I'm going to enable this wireframe, and I'm going to explain what this is. So iRacing, it'll take this file, and it will put it on a car. Now, obviously, a car is 3D. This car is 2D in order to paint. Now, this wireframe will show you all the contours of the car. So it's also important for lining things up. So if you want to line something up from fender to hood, you'll have to count these lines. Like this line matches up with that one. That line matches up with that one. Uh, or rather, these two here. These two lines will match up with these two lines. And you just count. And you kind of match them up. And that's how you can kind of get a, a flowing scheme from one section to another. It can get confusing because of the way that it's 2D and then it kind of wraps it around the car. It'll take a little time to get used to that. But all in all, once you get used to it, it's not super bad. Um, I'll go over. So like this green line here is actually the hood on this Camaro. There, there's the hood. There's the contour in the middle. The air intake there the roof flaps. So you can kind of visualize where things on, are in the car. That's why this wireframe is really useful. Like there's the exhausts. The wireframe is useful in where you want to put um, logos and where you want, if you want to paint something, you can kind of use the wireframe to kind of give you like a cool, uh, you can follow these lines if you want to make it look cool or, or make your own uh, design or whatnot. The wireframe is useful in that respect usually what I'll do is I'll turn it on intermittently when painting a paint scheme just to check to make sure that the logos aren't hanging off where they're not on a weird spot where I don't want them and then I'll also check once before I finalize the scheme I'll make sure that everything looks the way I want it right now we'll turn off the wire spec maps we're going to get into in a different video not necessarily this video like I said I'm going to try to keep this one as bare bones as possible um, just to kind of give an overview of how GIMP works um, so what we're going to do now is I'll talk about the tools. Up here we have all of our tools. Now there's a few that you're going to use a lot and there's a few that you won't use as much. The one you're going to use the most is this move tool. This move tool is going to be able to move things around and for an example I'm going to go over the select tool first and I'm going to show you how to copy and paste something in this in the sim. So we're going to go here this is our square select tool. Now an important thing to note, when I go to select this, I select this one thing. So now what's in this area is what I'm selecting. If I right click, I hit edit, I want to hit copy visible. Very important to hit copy visible because it's only going to copy what is in that selected square. So copy visible, now that selection is in our clipboard. So now if we hit control and scroll wheel out to zoom out, we get a broader view of the scheme. What we can do is we can paste this in. Now an important note, remember how we were talking about the layers and how you can overlay things and put things on top of what? 
we have windshield banner selected here. So when we actually copy and paste something in, it's going to show up here. So let's do that. Right click, edit, paste as. Now this is important as well. You want to paste this as its own layer in order to move it around on your scheme. So again, edit, paste as, new layer. Once we hit new layer, see how it says pasted layer now over here on the right? That's the layer. That's what we've copied. It's over the windshield banners. This is important because of this. So this is over the windshield banner right now. So if I go down and I hit my move tool, which is this cross with the arrows, and I grab onto the cup series, see what happens? I grab the decals. Now see how everything's moving? That is because it's below car decal. If you take this pasted layer and we drag it up above car decal and we try to do that very same thing, look, we only get that layer. You have to remember when you're on the move tool, if you grab something that you don't have selected, you can still move it. So if you want to move something, make sure it's on top of something that you're trying to move. So here's our pasted layer. Here's cup series. So I'll explain this move tool obviously does as advertised. It moves around. What we can do now is see how the square is still selected on that cup series spot. Technically, that's still quote unquote selected. So what we want to do is unselect that. How do we do that? We go up to the select tab in the top left. See how it gives you some uh, options here when you hit select. Hit select none and watch what happens with that square when I hit none. Gone. It's taken that select tool out. So now we're free to do what we want with this. So as I stated, the move tool just allows you to move it around. Fairly simple. So the next tool we'll get into is going to be the rotate tool. So let's say we want this uh, on, I don't know, the right side of the car. So drag it down. Obviously, that's not how you want the logo. It'll come out kind of funny looking. Go to the rotate tool. Now, when I explain the rotate tool, there's two different things with it. You can either lock the rotate or you can unlock the rotate. Now. When you unlock the rotate, you can get any angle you want. Full 360, any angle that you want. Now, I'm going to not do that. I'm going to hit, I'm going to X out of this. So now I'm going to talk to you about the, the locking of it. If you hit shift, it'll lock. See how it says 15 degree shift here? It'll lock to 15 degrees. See how I can't do very minute movements and it's very specific on what angle it wants to be. That's all from hitting shift. So I'm just going to turn it so it's flat like this. Now, important to note, it won't change anything until you hit rotate. When you hit rotate, you finalize what you've done with this logo. I'm going to hit rotate. There it is. It's now rotated. You can do that with any layer that you want. You can do it in any way you want. The next one we're going to get to is scaling. So this scale to works in much the same way. You click the scale tool, which is up over here. Now you still have this layer selected, your, your pasted layer. It works in two ways. Now I'm going to explain to you guys why one way is not the best way. The way that I don't use a lot is the way that isn't locked. Now see where it says keep aspect here when you hold shift. We're going to get to that, but I'm going to do it without holding shift. Watch what happens. I can stretch and move this however I want. Now, the reason this is a problem is I'm going to move this. And then, like, like the rotate, it won't do anything until you hit scale. When I hit scale, look at what it did to it. It didn't keep the aspect ratio, so it made it look really, really bad. I'm going to hit Control-Z to undo what we just did. Now, like rotate, when we held shift to lock the angle of the rotate, we can hold shift here to keep the aspect ratio. Holding shift, watch on the left side over here when I hold shift. Okay, so it didn't really do it. There it is. So now that I'm holding shift, it's going to keep that aspect ratio, and I can't make it look funny. It's going to keep the aspect ratio, which will make it look better. So let's expand that out to probably about, 
I'd say right here. Hit scale, and now it has scaled it to that size. Let's go back to our move tool, which, like I explained, is the cross here, and we can move this to where we want. So say we wanted it there. Perfect. So, so far, we've gone over the move, rotate, and scale. Those are two really important, three really important tools to use when making a paint scheme. Next, we've already gone over the square select tool. The circle select tool works in much the same way. The one that works very different is the free select tool. Now, you can use the free select tool in a couple different ways. I'm going to click this. Now we're in a selection type mode again, but this time we can select whatever we want. So let's go down. We're on the pasted layer here. Let's go down to here. Say we want this NASCAR logo. Say we want that, right? Now, if we were to do the square, look how much we'd have to do. We'd get all kinds of black in it. We don't really want that if we want just that logo. With the free select tool, well, see how, see how it selected it after that? Make sure you go to select none again. With the free select tool, one click starts it, and you can draw wherever you want. Now, control will lock the, the, the direction. So if I hit control, see how it's flat, and it does it in different angles? If I release control, watch what happens. I can do any angle I want. If I hit control, I can only do certain angles. So I use that to do flat lines, like right here, I'll do flat lines. See how it doesn't quite line up right there? I'll show you a cool thing that we can do. So I'm hitting control to keep it flat. I'm going to complete this, this selection, but I know that that's going on a downward angle and that might not look right. So see these little dots? You can drag these dots wherever you want and that's what you'll select. So what I'll do is I'll drag it so it's straight. So now we see that we've selected this Cup Series logo. It works in much the same as when we got the Cup Series logo from the windshield. You right click, edit, copy, visible. Now we've copied just what's in this area. So let's do this. Right click, edit, paste as, new layer. So now this new layer has now come up as pasted layer one. Now you can rename these. I don't usually do it, but you can rename them. So the, the thing about this is we still have this area selected here. Go to select, none. So now we, we're just playing around with what we have. Now watch what's cool about this. If I grab this, it's just what we've selected. That's it. It didn't have any black around it. It's just what we've selected. So let's take this and bring it to the door. Say we want to put this here in the back corner. Now, it looks kind of funny, right? So, with the black on the Cup Series, why don't we make this car black? It would be kind of cool to make it black. But we're going to create a problem when we do that. The Goodyear's black. I'll get to that. So because this logo has a black background, just for simplicity's sake, we're going to make it a black car. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to where it says base. Now this base color is the blue that we see here. Now, if you notice, we don't have black in our color here. We don't have that. We could do it ourselves, but I'm going to take this opportunity to show you how to use a different tool. This is the color picker tool right here. If you click the color picker, whatever you click, it will take that color. Now, important to note, it will only take the color from the layer that you have selected. So if we want this black from the cup series, we're going to have to scroll back up. We're going to have to go to the pasted layer, which is here, which is our cup series logo. Then you're just going to left click. Now watch the color up here where this, where this is. Watch this color when I click. Bang. We've now selected black, and it's the same black that's on this logo. Let's zoom back out by holding control and scroll wheel. We're going to scroll back down to our base. Now we're going to talk about the brush tool. This is how we color things. So now that we've selected the black that we want, this tool right here is the brush. This tool is what we use to paint, 
with different colors and different areas. So click this. It has a few different options for it. Now, you have a variety of different brushes. For simplicity's sake, we're just going to use the regular br brush today. But there is different effects that you can do as well. This size, now, it may seem like 29 is small, but it's actually fairly large. If you go up halfway here, look how big that that dot gets. So it's very sensitive to the size. Since we want to paint the whole scheme, this black, I'm going to make it as big as possible. And then it's just like Microsoft Paint. Click and drag. Now you've made the car all black. And it looks good. It's the same color as our logo, which looks really awesome. So next up, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to um, use this, this wand tool. Now I'm going to have to do a couple things first. One, that problem we talked about with the good year. So that is a problem because now you can't read it and you want it to look authentic. So what do we do for that? See these color change decals right here? This layer. Click that layer. See how it highlighted kind of whereabouts that Goodyear logo is? What you can do is you can set the alpha selection channel. Now what that'll do is it'll only select the color changeable parts, which are going to be the two Goodyears and the Camaro on the back. So say we want it to be red just for simplicity's sake. Or you know what? Why don't we go to the Cup Series logo again? And we'll grab that red with the color picker again. That way we keep everything kind of together. See how the reds are slightly different? Let's scroll back down to the color change decals. Right click. Now you have a huge thing, and this looks complicated. It really does. But see how it says alpha to selection? Watch what happens when I click that. Look what it selected. The two good years and the Camaro on the back. So now, remember how we talked about what was selected as your work area? Technically now, both Goodyear logos and the Camaro are your only work areas. Slide back over here, get your brush, make sure you have the correct red. Now watch what happens when I paint. I only painted the areas where it was selected, where that alpha selection was. So now to get out of this, where it's all selected, go up to the top, select, none. Now you've changed the colors on your Goodyear and Camaro to make them contrast, which is really good. So, so far, we've covered the use of tools, we've covered how to select things, copy things, how to color things, and now we've just shown how to use an alpha selection channel. Next up, I'm going to show you how to use the selection tool, the free selection tool, to make a design. Let's scroll down to the base. Now I'm going to explain something here. If I draw something on the base, the base is the bottom of the scheme. So everything is going to go over that. If I wanted to have a, a different, uh, different sticker that I could move around, I would have to create a new layer. So why don't I do that? While I have base selected, right click. See how this pops up again? But now we're going to use the new layer. So you click New Layer. We're going to save it as Red Stripe. See how you can change the layer name over here on the left? Hit OK. There it is. Now we have a Red Stripe layer. It's obviously a blank layer because we haven't put anything in it yet, but we're going to change that. Go to your Free Selection tool. So this Red Stripe layer is going to be over our base. So for simpli simplicity's sake, let's just, actually, I didn't mean to do that. What I want to do is I just want to have a, something cool here. Select them. Let's, uh, let's do like a, um, a line, kind of like, kind of like this. This, this, this will look cool. And maybe we'll have another one like running down. Ah, we'll leave it at one line. So now this is selected. We're on our red stripe layer. This is selected. Go to your brush. Color. See how it's only painted where we had it selected? Go to select. None again. So because this is its own layer, watch what we can do.
we can grab onto it, and we can actually move that layer around. This is important when you want to get the other side of the car to look identical. So see where it says red stripe over here in the layers? Left click and just drag it onto the screen. And watch what happens. If we zoom out, it's come on the screen itself again. See this? So now we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys how to use the flip tool. So obviously it's gonna match the way that it, it came onto the screen, which is the direct copy of this one, but we want it on the other door, so we need to flip it. This tool over here, we're back on the left, the flip tool. Click that. Now there's two different ways you can flip. You can flip vertical and you can flip horizontal. So horizontal flip is going to make it go this way. Flip horizontally. Let's flip that back. What we want to do to match this door to the other side is the vertical flip. So once it'll change the icon, click to flip. Now, I made a mistake. When I flipped it, it flipped it up beyond my work area. So let's just drag this down really quick. We'll do the flip tool. Now I can grab it. If it's out of your work area, it won't work. And then just eyeball it, line it up to whereabouts you think you need it to be. So now you flipped it and now both sides of the car are identical. They have both the same type of design. So let's say, hmm, let's say I wanted to do a cool Chevy logo. Say I wanted to copy this Chevy logo. Go to our square selection, select the Chevy logo, edit, copy visible. Now I'll go to edit, paste as, new layer. So there it pasted, it's there. Remember again, select, none. Now you're just working with your Chevy logo and see it's come up here on your layers on the right. Now because I square copied it, you're gonna have a black box around it. See that? Now that looks ugly. You wanna see what's behind that. I'm gonna show you guys how to use the wand tool. So because this black box, because of the way that we selected it, is behind it, we need to use this, this wand tool. Now this tool, is a selection tool itself, but it does it in a very different way. It'll select based on color. So here's the threshold. You can go anywhere from so low to so high. High is never good, low is never good. You're gonna be somewhere between where I have it now and somewhere right around here. So let's see what this gets us. We have the, the wand selected. We wanna get rid of this black around the back. If I, if I click this, make sure you're on the right layer, look what happens. I'm going to zoom in. See how it selected everything around that Chevy logo? Now I'm going to show you something cool. Go to the eraser, which is right here. We're on the left again. Go to the eraser. Now watch. This eraser is the same size as the brush, so why don't we take, make that a little smaller? Watch what happens when I erase. It only gets rid of what I had selected. After you're done, hit select none. Now that Chevy logo has a transparent background. So now wherever you put it, it is going to have a transparent background. So we'll put that there like that. That's the best way to use that selection tool. It's to get rid of backgrounds and whatnot. So next, let's paint a little bit more. I'm gonna show you another little tool. Remember that wire that I was talking about earlier? how I could use that to my advantage. Well, if I go to wire and I turn it on, see this green? Why don't we highlight that? And I'm gonna show you guys something. So this is actually the side skirt of the race car. I'm gonna highlight all the green, like so. It takes a second, but just highlight the green. An important thing to note, if your logos are hanging off, this green line, it's not going to show up on the car. Even though there's extra black here in the in the, the fender well, that's actually not going to be painted on the race car. So you need to make sure that your logos are inside that green line. Now that we have this selected, I'm going to go to our pasted layer one, or pasted layer rather, which is our Cup Series logo. Let's say we want to paint it yellow. Go to our color picker, which is up here. I'm on the left again. Pick yellow. 
The color pick is very, very useful when you want to try to keep the color scheme uh, close to what your logos are, so you can pull different colors from your logo to make it all flow. After we've selected that, let's go down to the base. Now let's paint that yellow. Why don't we go over on the other side, go to our free selection tool again, select the side skirt, go to our brush, paint it. So now we've used the wireframe to paint something. We've used it as a, a guide on where to paint. This can also be used if you're going to paint a big area. So say we wanted to paint the roof. Now we still have this selected, remember. Hit select none. Scroll up to your pasted layer again because we want to pull our colors off this logo. Our color picker tool. So we want it blue. Pick our blue. Go down to the base. Go to your brush. Now watch what I can do here. Now I can free paint. I'm on the base, so I'm on the base scheme. Now watch what happens though, because the yellow is on the base, if we take blue and go through it, it'll go over it. But it won't the red, because the red is its own layer above the base. So we're going to color the roof blue. Just a simple, just paint like you're painting in Microsoft Paint. Very simple. Now I'm not trying to be too finessey here, I'm just trying to show you guys how to work things. So who knows if this paint scheme will actually even look good, but... We'll see. So now that that's blue, I used the wireframe to track where I'm putting the blue. So now, say we're done with the wireframe. We'll turn it off. So now all our work is saved on the paint scheme just like so. I'm going to show you guys again how to, uh, how to put a different layer in and how to find a layer. So say you're up here, right, at shift knob by accident, and you're like, oh, I really forget what the Chevy logo is. Just click it with the move tool. If you click and hold with the move tool, it'll show you on the left. See the left where pasted layer 2 is highlighted now? That'll tell you which one it is. When you let go, it'll go back to what you were on, but at least now you know what the name is for that. Click, highlight, drag it onto the screen, drag it to where you would want it, in the same kind of spot as it was before, and use our rotate tool. Hold shift, rotate, Click Rotate. So now we have our Chevy logo in the same spot that we wanted before. Let's do that again with the Cup Series logo. So I forget what it was called. Click it. Pasted layer is what it's called. Find Pasted Layer. Click. Drag to the screen. Move to where you'd like it. Go to your Rotate tool. Hold Shift. Rotate it. Now, say you want a little bit of an angle while you're still in the Rotate tool. Don't hold Shift and just angle it a little bit and then hit Rotate. And that'll angle it. So we've gone over the basics on how to put some logos in. We'll, we'll do this one just for, for simplicity and uh, make the scheme the same. So paste the layer one, drag, move, rotate, Shift, rotate, click there. So now we have. Everything's looking the same on the car, which is good. That's what we want. We want the car to look very flowy. So I'm going to go over the next step, which is uh, the alphabet text tool. Um, this is how you can put your name on the name rail and whatnot, and I'll, uh, I'll go over that. But for right now, let's, uh, let's select the yellow. So let's scroll down to the base, go to our color picker, select the yellow. So now what I want to do is I want to hit this A. This is the text tool. Click onto your screen. Over here on the, on the left is all the information you need to know on what you're going to be doing here in text. So if you want to pick a different font, I used Impact Condensed. I like it. You just pick a different font. They have all kinds. This is where you pick your size and your color, which matches the color that you have selected when you click Select. When you click onto the screen, it'll match that color. Then we come over here to this little box here that's kind of in the middle of the hood. It has a lot of the same information that it has over on the left, but it has your different options for bold, italic, underline, 
and strike through. I personally like italic. I think it adds a little bit of character. We'll use that for, for this. Now, say 50 wasn't what you wanted. Go to this and just type in 100. And hit it. And then what you want to do is after you do that, see how it's still got it up there? You want to click one of these boxes. So now it'll be 100. You have your italic selected. I'm going to hit caps lock. And I'm just going to type NASCAR. So now it's still technically a text. What you want to do is after you're done, hit select all, select none. Just to make sure that it's just that selected. Move over to the, the move tool. Now what this has turned into is just another layer. It's just like another logo. So you can move it around all you'd want. Let's go back to the rotate. Say we want it as our hood decal. Hold the shift, rotate it, just like we've been doing. Say we want it a little bit bigger. Go to the scale, hold shift, drag, scale. So now this is also important when you want to uh, put it in the middle. When you want to line things up, the wireframe comes into into play here. Go up, turn your wireframe on, and then you can kind of pick where you want it. So like if you want, so see how it's pr it's pretty centered, right right about here. And the reason I'm saying that is see how the edge of the N is touching this line and the edge of the R is touching that line, maybe a little bit more this way. That's when you know that it's centered right in the hood. You can also use this as your center line on the hood on this particular car. The wireframe will help us uh, make sure that things are in the right area. Like if you didn't want it, 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 important to note, you can move things without selecting them. So if you didn't want this and you noticed like you were at the end of the scheme and you're almost done, you're like, oh, I don't really like that. You can grab onto this and move it to where you'd want. Keep in mind, though, if you grab the wireframe by accident, see what happens. If you do that, just quickly click, hit Control Z and it'll bring it back to where it's supposed to be. Same thing with over here. Move that to where we want it. So we've got our NASCAR on the hood. We check our wireframe. It's looking good. Looking real, real good. Turn your wireframe off just for a second. Make sure everything's looking good. All the colors are good. So now we want to put our name on the name rail, right? So click the wireframe on again. This is the name rail, and you can see the curve. When lines are close to each other, that indicates a sharp curve. So let's go. Let's go do it in yellow. And uh, we'll hit the A again for our text tool. Click on here. And then just start typing. I'm just going to write GIMP tutorial. And when you're done typing, just hit the move button. And now it's turned into its own layer. But it's kind of big for a name. So we'll just go back to our scale tool. And scale it down. And then drag it to where it looks good. This part right here is on the inside. Right here. So try to keep it somewhere in between this roof flap and that line. It's usually where I put them. And then like before, I'm going to grab onto it. Drag it onto the screen so it's a direct copy. And just bring it to the other side. Go to our rotate, shift, rotate, as we've done. So now the name is on the name rail. You know it's looking good. So we have our sponsors. We've gone over a few of the basic things on how to paint, add layers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the wireframe off. Let's say we're done. Let's say we finished and we're happy with the way that this paint screen scheme has come out. Came out. Come out. I like that. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take this scheme and add it into trading paints. But in order to do that, we have to export the scheme. Now, as a PSD file, it won't add the scheme on into iRacing. It's not compatible. It can't be a PSD file. It has to be what they call a TGA file or a target file. So the cool thing about GIMP is that built-in is a way to export it. Let's go up to File. Now this is going to give you, this is how you move your scheme around. This is how you move it to different places in your computer. I want to show you guys one more thing before I do this. And it's a final check that I do. Go to your number block. You guys see the problem that I see? This NASCAR logo is going into your number block a little bit. 
So that number might block that logo, and if that's a sponsor, you don't want that. So just move it back. That way it's not in that, that block. This one is okay, but this one was not. Make sure you disable these blocks, because uh, if you don't, when you export, they'll be on the car. Let's, uh, let's change our pit box colors, too. And our pit board. See the pit box colors? Highlight this. They're actually down in the bottom left most of the time. We'll just do, uh, we'll do yellow. And then uh, the pit board sign. Why not? We'll do it yellow. And then just for the heck of it, I'll use just a funny little tool. I don't know why this is in here, but it's a pepper. And we'll just put that on the pit board. And you know what? We'll just uh, we'll throw a pepper in somewhere. Somewhere here. Put the size down a little bit. We'll put one on the quarter panels. Now, because this is a brush, what I have to do is uh, I'll go down here and I'll just select it. Copy visible. Paste as. New layer. It'll come up on top of it. Drag it. Rotate it. See how I can't rotate it? I do that often. It's because this is still selected. Select none. Then I can rotate. So let's say that's done. We've changed everything we wanted to change. We're ready to go. We've checked our numbers. We know they're good. Check our sponsor blocks. We know they're good. See how these are covered up? See how the hood's covered up? We're good. That's a little off-center a little bit, but we won't worry about that. When we're ready to go, people say to, to turn the mask off, and it says to turn the mask off before exporting. I haven't done it, and I haven't really noticed anything. If, if you know why or, or if I'm doing that wrong, let me know. I haven't seen a problem with it. I, I always forget to turn it off, and every time I put the scheme in, it seems fine. So I'm not sure why you really have to do that. It doesn't seem to affect it all too much. But if it does, uh, let me know what it does affect in the comments um, below, just, just so I know. So I'm going to leave it on just for... You know, just because I always do anyway. We'll go up to File. See this little button right here? It says Export As. Click that. So now it's going to come up here. We're in the folder that we started in, where our template is. But now it's it's the same thing. So what we want to do is we want to change this to what we want. So Camaro ZL1 Gen 6. Why don't we change that to GIMP Tutorial. But now we need to change one more thing. Where it says PSD, take caps lock off, click on the other side of PSD, backspace, 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 to delete it. Make sure you keep the period between that. Write TGA. That's the type of file that we're going to need to put this into iRacing. Once you have that correct, click export. Click export again. And it should export that paint scheme. So now let's go in and check. We're done with the paint scheme. It's exported. Let's minimize GIMP for right now. Let's go back to trading paints. So here's a paint scheme that I had before, if you remember at the beginning of the video that was on the car. Once you've set up your trading paints, you'll have this. Find the scheme that you worked on, which is the NASCAR Cup Series Chevy Camaro ZL1. Go to Choose Paint. Go to Choose New Paint. Go to Upload Paint. Select a file. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to E. Here's our GIMP tutorial folder. See where it says GIMP tutorial TGA? Now, if you guys remember, the PSD file was also in this folder, but it won't let us put it on Trading Paints. Click this. Click Open. Trading Paints will do its thing, and you'll get a message here. Success. Your new paint has been uploaded. Look for it next time you race. Just click Got It. Now, as a preview, there's our paint. There's exactly what it looked like when we were in GIMP. But now let's see what it looks like in iRacing. So let's pull iRacing up. Let's close out of this. Now we had the Chevy Camaro right here. We've uploaded our paint to Trading Paints. Let's see what it looks like. And there it is. Everything that we did in GIMP is now put on our race car. Right down to the Chevy logo where we put the GIMP tutorial on the name rail, NASCAR on the hood. Everything we've done is on this scheme now. We've now 
successfully created our own paint scheme and put it in iRacing. When you go to race now, this will be the scheme that you have. So by using all the tools and everything that I've taught you guys today, you know the basics of how to use GIMP to create a paint scheme on iRacing. You know the basics on how to upload to iRacing by using trading paints, and you know the basics on how to use the tools on how to make a paint scheme for iRacing. Now, if you guys want to see a video of me going more in-depth and how to make more detailed paint schemes using gradients, different logos, things of like that nature, getting logos off the internet and putting them into these paint schemes, let me know. This was just a basic overview of how to use the different tools and create something of your own to race for your own. Basically, that's how to use GIMP in a nutshell. If you, knew, if you can master those steps, you'll be good to go. And with enough time, you'll be able to play around with the different tools and different effects, and you guys can create some amazing paint schemes yourselves. So if you liked this, this video, give it a like. If you want to see another video of me going more in-depth on uh, getting logos offline, uh, making more in-depth bases and paint schemes using gradients and every other effect that I can possibly get in GIMP, if you want to see me create spec maps, which is where you can add special finishes onto the car, let me know in the comments. If you have questions, let me know in the comments too, and I'll uh, be sure to answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, if you make some paint schemes in GIMP, head on over to my Instagram, which is thanks for trying East underscore esports. Go over there, send me a message with a picture of the paint scheme. Ask me any questions on there if you want to, but. That's going to do it for me today. Hopefully you guys learned something from this tutorial, and hopefully you can use it to create something cool yourselves. And if you do, I'd really like to see them. Maybe I'll see it on track sometime. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.